Hi, I'm Daphne from Daps Makeup here to give you the quick tea on luxury makeup. And today we are going to be talking about the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked in the shade Snake. All right, so this is a beautiful palette that you can see here. This is supposed to be geared toward deeper skin tones. They did come out with three colorways. There were four choices in terms of packaging. Um, so if you buy from their website, you can mix match uh, the packaging um, with, with whatever color store you like. If you buy from like Sephora, for example, then you can't mix and match. Um, like there's the owl and the owl packaging you can only get on the website. And I actually really did want it, but I ended up buying from Sephora because I had some points. So I was able to get this for free. Couldn't be free, so I stuck with this snake pattern, but um, you could easily go onto the Hourglass website if you like the owl better or the leopard or whichever um, package you like, you can switch it with whatever you like. Um, uh, you know, I'll show you a quick um, video showing you um, the color stores for all three. I did when I went to um, Sephora, I took, took a quick video of all three, but based on my skin tone, I went with the snake palette. So here, take a look at the three different colorways. Now, when it comes to this palette, yes, I did use it today. Um, and that is why my face is glowing. My face, you know, I'm looking blurred and glowing and it, it's due to this product. And not only did I use it on my face, but also on my eyes. So next you're gonna see a demo um, where you get to see how I created this makeup look with this palette. And then when you come back, I'll give you swatches of this. And then I'm also gonna compare it to my other Hourglass products that I have. So I do have last year's Ambient Lighting Edit Unlock, the Tiger version. So if you remember this one, so I'll let you know the differences between that and this one. And I even had the OG one, so old. <laughs> All the labeling is what wiped off, off of this, but I still have it. Um, this is what actually got me started with Hourglass, why I became in love with Hourglass was for the original one. Um, love it so much, you could see I hit pan on this one. Um, so I'll also give some comparisons with the OG one. And I also have this trio from Hourglass. Um, this was the Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 3, geared toward darker skin tones. Um, and this was a great palette as well. Now this one I didn't hit pan, I actually dropped it and, and broke this one, so that was sad. Um, but to be honest, the shade that I used the most anyway were these two, and particularly this one, which is actually also in the Tiger. So to be honest, um if if it's still available you know at that time if you had the tiger then you might not necessarily need this one but I'll, I'll i'll show you some comparisons um with the new snake palette to the old hourglass palettes that i own in my collection um and i will give you my final thoughts on the snake hourglass all right see you Hi soon guys so today we are gonna use the hourglass ambient lighting edit unlocked snake so yes we are going to use this beauty on my face today just doing a light makeup look right now just for my base i have the fenty skin tint in the shade um 20 and then just for concealer tom ford soft um traceless matte concealer 6w0 um just a little bit particularly under the eyes um and benefit brows that's it so let's go here. So we're going to first, I normally do my eyes first, but in the spirit of the hourglass, we're going to start here. I am actually going to start on my cheeks. I'm going to use all the products so you can see it um, used. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to use all three of the blushes, but I'm going to, uh, I'll build up and just use them all just so you can see them all in my so face. So we're gonna first start with blush number two called Coral Haze. I'm using a dense um, blush brush from Wayne Goss, um, number 13. Um, given how these are light, um, you know, lightly pigmented blushes, um, I, I tend to go use a dense brush. It is pigmented, but 
like with the Pat McGrath, I wouldn't use this type of brush. Um, but for Hourglass, to get the full pigmentation, I'm going to use this dense brush. So here we go. And so you can see it is showing up on my skin tone. It has a light luminous finish. So it shows up, but as you can see, you can't compare this to like a Pat McGrath matte blush. So you have to know what you're getting into when you're doing an hourglass blush. Um, that, you know, this is great for when you want a softer blush look. Okay, now I'm gonna go right below it to number five called Mystic Flush. I'll do it on the other cheek. So here we go. And so like I said, yes, you can see it. It gives a beautiful flush to the skin. It's natural, it's luminous. And so there's number five and number two. And just to even things out, I'm gonna put a little bit of number five on this cheek and a little bit of number two on this cheek. I'll be right back. Adding five onto this side. And so you can see it's building up the pigmentation. I'm adding two to this side. So they're both giving this beautiful coral flush to my cheeks. And now I'm going into number three. Now this is a metallic strobe powder. It is infinite strobe light. Um, this one I am gonna um, use my Sony G soft cheek. Um, Cause I, you know, I, I got plenty already on my cheeks <laughs> and I'm gonna add this kind of more metallic, you know, it's, you know, it's a question if you wanna use it like a highlighter, like a blush. I already have a lot of going on my cheeks, so I'm going with a softer uh, brush to go on top of what I already have. But I don't know if you can appreciate it, but it's bringing out even more luminosity to the finish. You know, obviously it gets hard because I'm putting everything on top of each other, so you're having a mix of all three. You could certainly just use them individually. Um, but this is how these blushers are looking on my skin. And let me also turn off my ring light. Um, so hopefully maybe you can better also appreciate what it looks like in natural lighting. It's probably being washed out by the lights. So this is all three blushes on my cheeks in natural lighting. Okay, now the real big question is, is this bronzer really a bronzer for my skin tone? This is the bronzer called Solar Bronze. Admittedly, typically with the hourglass bronzers, I use them as finishing powders. Um, so normally I would go in with my cream bronzer and then I would use it to set it um, or set my foundation or things like that. I did not use any bronzer today. I'm gonna try to use it truly as a bronzer. We will see. I am using my Sony G Nidra Pro. This is what I use for all my bronzers. It's nice and dense. It's what I use for all bronzers, so. Let's go in here. Okay, so this is this side. I'm gonna just put, just make sure I put the right one, yep. So there you go on this side, and this is my cheek without. So it's showing up a little bit. Um, let's look on my forehead. You might better appreciate it on my forehead. It's not gonna be anything strong as you can see it's not that pigmented i think you know right now as kind of a no makeup makeup look it's giving a natural it's slightly bronzing my skin um you know anybody deeper than me this is certainly not gonna bronze them at all it's it's a stretch for me to call it bronzer bronzer no bronzer but it can bronze me a little bit so if i'm really going for a true no makeup makeup look um then you know then I could say it's doing a little something let me turn off my ring light so here it is in natural lighting all right and now on to the highlighters these I will tell you do work and I just realized I gave you the wrong name for the last blush that I use, it was number four called Sunbeam. It is considered true blush versus the highlighter, this one, number three, which will use shortly is the metallic strobe powder, infinite strobe light, so sorry about that. But I'm gonna first start using what is a finishing powder 
um, which is called Radiant Light. Um, it's very light on me that it can actually, for me, is almost like a soft highlighter. So I'm going to use this first, and then I'll go into the true, more metallic, true highlighter. But I just want you to see what this shade looks like on me. So as you can see, it actually provides an, a nice natural highlight. So if I want it to be not trying to do too much, you can see that natural glow from within that, that you're getting here. So if you don't want a metallic finish, but I think this is pretty and it is something that I can use as a finishing powder slash highlighter. Now I'm gonna really go into the true highlighter. Now this one you're gonna see yeah yeah i'm gonna come back over with the blush um but at least you can fully see it beaming switch to a fenty um brush for the highlighter this way it can be more targeted with my highlight but that's the one thing i can say the highlighters highlight <laughs> i'm going over the same areas um yeah, this is a much more targeted um, brush. Let me actually use a finishing powder, like a finishing powder. I just wanted to show you the old ambient lighting edit. It's so old, <laughs> the back is all gone on, on this one. Um, on these ones, this is what I use, um, I still use uh, as finishing powders. Um, you could see I panned this one, um, which was the deepest one in here. I think it was supposed to be considered a bronzer. I use it as finishing powder, um, but even this one I can use under my eyes as finishing powder. So these are the ones that I have used many times as finishing powder, these top two. Um, this one I feel like is lighter, but I think I could still pull it off. So actually let's use it as finishing powder rather than highlighter. I'm using my Sony G uh, Smooth Buffer. And this is the brush that introduced me to the whole concept of finishing powders. This is my day for that. So. Um, just, I'm doing it lightly because I want to see how it works, but I'm going to do that underneath my eye. But that's kind of beautiful. So this is without, within, I don't know if you can appreciate the beautiful blurring action that it provides. So actually this, you know, I kind of first used it as a highlighter. You can actually truly use it as finishing powder. It actually does work on my skin tone. That is actually beautiful. That's the one thing I will give to Hourglass. Finishing powders, they are so good at finished powder. I mean, they're the ones that made me realize the importance of a finishing powder. So actually, yes, you can, if you're my skin tone, use this as a finishing powder. And then this is highlighter, these is blush. This one as bronzer is a stretch. Um, you have to be truly no makeup makeup to be calling this a bronzer. This for most of us would be actually a finishing powder. Um, and it has, and the quality of the powder works well as a finishing powder too. So that's the other thing, not just the depth, but the, the, the actual formulation, I think it's even best as a finishing powder, setting powder, um, more so than a true bronzer in the, in the sense that we think of. Okay, you know, but you can just appreciate the beautiful finish to my skin. Um, how it just has my skin looking blurred, flawless, glowing. I don't have any crazy filter. I have the ring light on, um, but I don't have any other filter on um, on me. And here's it without the ring light. But you can see like the beautiful finish that it does to my skin. Hourglass formula is something special. We can hate about issues of depth, but in terms of formulation, now these are not eyeshadows, but we're gonna just use it as eyeshadows just for the hell of it. It's gonna be a soft, simple look. Um, so I'm just um, bringing out Pat McGrath um, uh, eyeshadow primer. Just gonna quickly apply that there so that these have something to adhere to. So at least we can give it a, a fair shake if you wanted to use it as, I mean, you, you could do this without eyeshadow primer, but 
just to see how much we can pull out of these powders that are not supposed to be eyeshadows, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, Cause as you know, you can use a bronzer as your transition. Now, I know we have questions, is this a bronzer for me or not? A but dense brush, so I can do my best to at least do what I can. So this is, here's the shade. So I think this will work great as a transition. So, you know, if you're just doing a soft look, this is a pretty color on me. So as you can see, just kind of looking at it on my eyes, you can tell how this is essentially like my skin tone, maybe just a tiny bit darker. So that's why using this as a bronzer, mm, it's a stretch. It's only just slightly darker than my skin tone. It's good, I would think, to use to set my bron my cream bronzer. Um, but you know, in terms of eyeshadow, just kind of using as no makeup, makeup look, at least this is, you know, looks like my skin. Bring some more color. So let's bring some coral in here. This is a Sonia G jumbo blender, another dense brush. I'm using dense brushes to bring out as much pigmentation as possible. So there's that coral. So let's put a little bit of coral just to kind of brighten things up. That's pretty. So everything is looking natural, but you know, your skin, but better kind of thing. Okay, you know what? Let's use the other blush. Like this has a more metallic finish and especially you didn't get to really see it on its own because I used it on my cheeks on top of the other blushes. So now maybe on my eyes, you can get a better appreciation for it. So that is what the shade looks like. So it's more metallic than the other blush and lighter. Um, so it's actually good on top of my eyes, giving a nice light shimmer on the eyes. I'm going to pull that and off. Let's use the highlighter as my inner corner highlight. Woo! As I said, this highlighter plays no games. Plays no games. Oh no, she plays no games. Okay. So, <laughs> Oh yes, the other powders are soft and sweet. This one, oh no, she plays. She is a true highlighter. All right, so I'm gonna just put some mascara on, a quick little lippy and we'll finish up the, okay, this look. So I put some uh, liner, mascara, a little lippy on, uh, you know, kind of just to finish the look. So here is the finish hourglass look. And I'm loving it, you know, if you're wanting a soft, glowy, natural look, this is gorgeous. The highlighter, I'm glowing, the blush, bronzer, but it did bring me some warmth. You know, we'll have a discussion about the bronzer, but, you know, finishing powder, everything. So, and I actually didn't do a bad job on my eyes, actually. So, um, for a simple, soft eye look, they didn't work bad as eyeshadow either. So this is the final look. We'll come back together and have a more deeper discussion about this hourglass look with Snake. Bye. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video, getting to see this palette in action. But let's do some swatches together. I'm gonna swatch this for you and give you comparison to some of my other hourglass products. So let me start with the blushes in this palette. Um, I'm gonna start here, number two, um, drop down to number five and then six. So number two is called Coral Haze. So you can see that. So, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do it here. Hopefully you can appreciate this. So, so this palette, the snake one, these blushes are coral in shade. So you're gonna see, there's a tonal difference with the different palettes that I have. So there is differences between the two. Um, I'm gonna now drop down to number five, um, which is called Mystic Flush. Okay. So if we can see the difference. So this is, deeper than this one all right um you know in the video you saw me use both you know yeah you were able to see i, I did start 
put one in one cheek and then the other. I ended up mixing it afterwards. Um, not a huge difference between the two, but this one is deeper. You know, you could use, I could have easily just used this one. I ended up using both, but you could have easily like just used that one. Okay. And then I'm also going to go for this one here, um, which is number four for um this is called sunbeam and you know this one has more a little bit more of a metallic finish to it more shimmery so it, it's still considered a blush but the finish is different so a lot more orangier than these these are more pink pinker leaning in the coral family um, but you can see this has a little bit more metallic shinier finish than these um three so these are the three from snake Next, I'm going to pull out Tiger. All right, so I'm pulling out Tiger. Now, Tiger was very orange leaning, okay? So we're going to um, do the blushes here, and I'm going to put it right next to it, and let's see the comparison. So let's start with this one over here, number three. That is called Burnish Glow. This is the most pigmented um, out of the three. Okay, so, so, you know, kind of similar to this um, blush shade, uh, this just has more of a metallic finish, but, um, you know, this is, and this is just a little bit, little bit more orange, where this has a little bit more coral to it, but still orange leaning. So those two are more similar versus, you know, obviously much different from these two down here. All right, let me go for the more metallic finished one. Um, so this one, I think in this one there, technically, I think considering it more of a highlighter than a blush, but I'm still going to um, do it now. Um, it's called Metallic Strobe Powder Copper Flash Strobe Light. Um, you know, yeah, you could potentially use it highlighter, but you could also use it as a blush as far as I'm concerned. Um, so there you go. Um, so, you know, like I said, orange leaning in there, you got more of a metallic finish that's more similar to this one. Um, so that's that one. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna swatch this one that they are calling a blush, Iridescent Rose. I'm gonna tell you, you know, with this Tiger Pal, I love this Tiger Pal, except this shade for me is a complete dud for me and for my skin tone. Um, it looks pretty in the pan, um, you know, this marbling finish. And and I don't know also if it, just with mine that I picked up versus others. As you can see, there's a lot more white in the area and very little red. And so for me, I cannot use this as blush at all. I'm going to um, swatch it for you as well. And what I'm going to even do is swipe more here in the white predominant area. And then I'll try to do another swipe that's more in the redder area just so you could see them. But when you put in a blush, a brush and swatch it and then put it on my cheeks, this does absolutely nothing for me. So this I do not use at all. You can see why I do not use this blush on me. Um, those with fair skin tones, you know, could maybe pull this off and maybe it would um, come off as pink on fair skin tones, but on me, as you can see, this is a no-go as um, blush. And I won't even say it comes off ashy on me. Actually, when I put it on my cheeks, it disappears. So I won't even say it's ashy. It's just, it's nothing. Let me try to swipe more where there's a little bit more red to it. There's very little that I can capture, but here at least there, if I can capture that, and then you get some pink to it. Um, still like compared to these pink, much lighter. So number one, I still don't think it has enough depth for my skin tone, but even if I wanted to try to pull that off as blush, there is too little of the pink in mine for me to even get enough to even attempt to use it as blush. So those are the blushes from the Tiger palette. And then I'm going to bring out the OG the original one. So there were two, and I cannot tell you the names because like I said, unfortunately, it's so old, it's wiped off and, and I, I'm not even sure, you probably can't get these anyway, but I'm just gonna swipe them just um, in case you have these, in case you're wondering if you still have of it, is it worth now getting the snake? So, cause it has a pink one and, and an orange tone. So kind of like in this theme, pink and orange. So let me go for the pink one, which is the deepest one in this palette. It's not super deep in general, but deep, the deepest blush in this palette. 
Um, so there's the pink. So, you know, this might be more what this was trying to get at in the tiger, but did not work at all. Um, this shows up on me, but it is very light. It, it's, it, it just, just shows up. So it really has to be, um, if I'm going really for a true no makeup makeup look, um, or a lot of times, um, like it would be good to maybe to use to set a cream blush um if um i already have a blush and i have this in my work bag and i need a touch up things are kind of wearing off back in the um mask days you know i would wear a mask to work and some of my blush would come off and and i would have this in my bag and i would use it just to um, um touch up my my blush and it just bring back to life um the little blush that i have on its own it's not that pigmented but so better than what came in the tiger <laughs> but if you compare this one to the one, um, these two that are in the snake, the snake is actually better. You could see it's actually much more pigmented, deeper, deeper from my skin tone. Um, and then this shade here, you're gonna see this is also really light. So this one for my skin tone, now this has a more shimmery um, iridescent finish to it, even more so. But you can also see comparing this shade to these orange it's a lot different um not as pigmented so actually a lot of times i end up using this even as a soft highlighter um to be honest given how light it is um so just comparing just the blushes yeah you know when this first came out you know for us of deeper skin tones I mean, this was the one that the best that we could use. It was like the first time that we were even seeing something, I think, of a level of depth that maybe we could dip our toes into, but was not a great showing. Um, you know, this barely shows up as blush on us. It's a push. It's a real push, okay? Um, and then we'll get into these other powders, but this is a real push for a blush on my skin tone, anybody of my skin tone or deeper, um, where... The snake and the tiger, these blushes actually can pull off minus, you know, the dud from the tiger. But the two the two major blushes, this whole section does show up. So the difference between the two is just that if um, you're looking for something more orange leaning, tiger. If you want something more pinky coral leaning, then the snake. Um, so you can actually have both. You don't have to feel bad about picking one or the other. So if you have tiger, go ahead and still get snake because they serve two, two different roles in terms of color tones for the blushes. Um, and, but the one thing I will say that's nice about, um, the snake is that, okay, you have the pinky coral, but then you do still have one that it leans, um, orange where here you really just have the orange. And then unfortunately they tried to give us a, a pinky coral but for me it was a complete dud so i can only use tiger only for orange blushes where this is coral but at least it straddles the fence of pink and orange so you might have a little more versatility and choice when it comes to blush choices in a snake compared to tiger okay so let's move on from the blushes and let's talk highlighter slash finishing powder all right so we're going to talk about the light shades i'm leaving bronze bronzer bronzer for lash because I think that's the most controversial topic when it comes to hourglass. So let's um, go with finishing powder because finishing powder is what they're best at. Highlighters are actually what they're best at um, in my opinion. So um, this one here, um, number one, is, is, is called a finishing powder. It is a finishing powder, radiant light. Um, and I'm going to swatch it for you. You could almost use it as a soft highlighter if you wanted to. Um, but actually does also work as a good finishing powder. You, if you saw it on the demo, um, how I could almost, sometimes I would use this almost like a highlighter for it, put this kind of a base and then put this on top, but actually this worked beautifully as finishing powder under my eyes. So you can use it in the T zone and it was beautiful for those areas. So, um, here's the finishing powder in snake. We're going to put that right here. Okay. And then I'm gonna take the highlighter, a true highlighter. This is Metallic Strobe Powder Infinite Strobe Light. And I had messed up in the demo with the names, but here we go with the highlighter. And the highlighter highlights. This glows, okay? It, you know, and that's the beauty of Hourglass, is these powders. 
that you can have something that can glow so much. My face is beaming, but it is a fine product. There's no um, glitters. There is no big particles. It is finely milled. It is like glow from within, but still beaming. And so you can have a natural glow with the finishing powder, and then you can have a beaming glow with the highlighter. And so this does work on my skin tone. So these, I think that is where it's at in terms of formula. It is a beautiful formula that Hourglass has. So that is Snake. Let's take a look at Tiger. All right, so um, number two, they call this one, they don't call this a finishing powder. They call this metallic strobe powder, brilliant globe strobe light. Um, so yeah, once again, like I said, this can kind of straddle the fence between being highlighter slash finishing powder. Um, it has a radiant finish. You know, it's got this beautiful marble pattern. And so let's compare that. I'm going to put that here. And it's more to be really compared to here. And so they're kind of, I feel like they have very similar um, finishing. So it's kind of funny. They'll call this one a finishing powder, but then this one, They'll call it metallic strobe light. So, I mean, I think it's kind of like how, depending on your skin tone, your preferences, um, if you want to use these as finishing powder versus how, but you could see, you could see the difference between this kind of formula that you can actually use these as finishing powder, but it will give you a radiant finish. So just be aware of that. And now let's use the highlighter. Um, hold on, not, not before. Metallic strobe powder, divine strobe light. So this is the the true highlighter in this palette. Okay, and so these two are very similar. So these, you know, when you're comparing these, they're very similar. So between Tiger and Snake, there's not really much difference between their highlighters slash finishing powders. Um, the difference is more about the blushes, but this is where they're very similar. Okay, now I'm gonna pull out the OG one. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, this is the one shade in this palette that I absolutely do not use at all um, because I do feel like it is too light for my skin tone, but I am going to swatch it for you. Once again, do not know the names. They're already wiped off and probably things so. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I've never tried. I, I have not used this. It's a little bit too, this is too light for my skin tone. I, I do like to use lighter powders under my eyes, but this is kind of pushing it. Um, so this one I don't use. Uh, now this one I do use under my eyes. I, this one I can pull off. Okay. It's, but it is light. It is light. Um, but it, this color is closer to these. So these ones I can kind of pull off under my eyes. This is the one that I used to use a lot. I, I'm going to scrape off whatever I had. This was the darkest of the three. And I believe they had referred to this as a bronzer. This is not a bronzer. This was, I got a little bit of highlighter on my finger. I just wanna make sure that doesn't get on there. Okay, there. This was not a bronzer, on my, not on my skin tone. But it was deeper, yes, than the comparison to these three, yeah, it was deeper. Um, but as you can see, this was a great finishing powder. I mean, these work great. Um, what's even nice is this one was a, li a little bit deeper than these two, which was nice. So this one is more similar. Um, I can pull off either of these, um, but obviously I love this one because this was a little deeper. So that's why it's like basically done. I'm scraping the edges, but I can still pull off this one and this one I don't even bother with. Um, but the, the important thing is the formula is fantastic, but these are the finishing powder slash. Oh, oh, oops, oops, oops. This actually, yeah, I forgot. Then there was a true highlight. So this is one where all the newer ones are more predominantly have a lot of blushes and then you just have like one or two finishing powders. This one was heavy on the finishing powders, a little bit on the blush, and then you had one highlighter. So this highlighter you're gonna see is much icier than the previous ones I've shown you, but works on me and is still beautiful. Um, so yes, you know, like as you can see, they were very, the, the newer ones are very golden leaning and you know, typically for deeper skin tones, yes, depending on your undertone, many of us do love golden, Tone, so these are the newer ones. This one is icier, but 
Trust me, it's actually beautiful on my skin. And I have golden neutral, so I can pull off some icier ones, and especially when you do it lightly. Um, and as you're gonna, um, you know, the blush that comes with this one is more cool tone, uh, the, the blushes. So um, the highlighter actually pairs well with it. Um, so those are the highlighters and finishing powders from all three. Um, now, next, we're gonna get into the bronzers. Let's talk okay, this is where we got to talk, right? The bronzers, bronzers, okay? You know, when Hourglass was first coming out, even before we could even complain about the bronzers, you know, even this one, we were complaining about the blushes because this was, this was barely giving us enough depth. Then they came through, and then these recent ones, they've been coming through with better blushes that can actually show up on us. So then it was like, wait, 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 okay, Thank you. You're, you're coming through to a degree with the blushes. Okay, but what about this bronzer situation? Because like this one, that ain't no bronzer, but it was a beautiful finishing powder. So I, I didn't mind that. Now we come into bronzers. So are these bronzers? Well, obviously it all depends on what your skin tone is. Um, and then, you know, um, preference and style in terms of the formula. And we're going to talk about it. So um, I'm, we're going to go to the two darkest shades here and Tiger and Snake. And I'm also going to bring out my other palette in a second. Let's start with Snake, the newest one. All right. So let's see. Now they are labeling and we're going to also talk about the naming of all of these. Um, I keep doing air quotes for a reason because based on what they name these, because sometimes they name them as bronzer, sometimes they don't, and also how I use them. And we'll talk about bronzer. So in this one, it is labeled as bronzer, solar bronze. All right, here we go. So as you can see on this swatch, bronzer, hmm. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna talk about it. Now in the Tiger palette, they do not call it bronzer. They call it a finishing powder, transcendent light, transcendent light. So they're telling you, no, 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 this is not a bronzer. So, so before you go, oh my God, it's not deep enough. Well, they said, no, it's a finishing powder. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Now this one that they had come out with the light lightning palette, ambient lighting palette volume three, which was great. This middle shade actually is the exact same shade. Um, I don't know if I should even bother to swatch because it literally is the shade that comes in the um, in the Tiger palette. Um, just for proof, they're the exact same. Literally, same name. So it, it if you have one, you already have the other. Unfortunately, this one broke on me, but I'm gonna try to scrape the sides and get what I can get out of it. And this one is called Eternal Light, I believe. I just wanna make sure I don't go over the ones I've got. So hopefully you can see that. So you can see it's lighter than these, these two, okay? And then this last one, Prismatic Strobe Light. This actually is more of a highlighter. I could have used it in the other section, but I, I still left it here just cause the bronzing tone of this color. I thought I'd just leave it in this discussion. So this is considered a highlighter, more so. Okay, so let's talk. So none of these are ashy, so let, we can at least say that much. Okay, are these bronzers? Not really, you know, obviously when we talk about bronzers, it should typically be deeper than my skin tone. These are all, pretty much my skin tone, if anything, even maybe a little bit lighter than my skin tone, you know, but it's, it's near my skin tone. So for me, so obviously for my skin tone, for most people, my skin tone, and especially anybody deeper than me, they're not going to work as bronzers. Now those who are lighter than me, um, you know, so, um, so it's just a question of depth. So for some people, this would be a bronzer. So also that's all relative, right? You know, you can label something as bronzer and for some people it will be bronzer for them. It just is not a bronzer for all skin tones and particularly deeper skin tones. So I will tell you right now, for the most part, I use these not as bronzers, but as my finishing powder. They're great when, um, cause I use a lot of cream contour cream, um, bronzer. I will do that. And then I will use it to set 
my um, my cream bronzer. Um, I'll use it as finishing powder. So I really use a setting slash finishing powder, and I don't rely on this solely to bronze me. And and what's interesting is, like I said, sometimes they actually label it as finishing powder, and then sometimes they label it as bronzer. But to be honest, I can't say that this finish is really different from this finish. So why is one time it's finishing powder and one time the bronzer? And the truth of the matter is, like I said, if you're fair skinned, these are bronzers. If you're deep skinned, these are finishing powders. And also to be honest, even calling it a bronzer, bronzer at all, just in my opinion, I think you can kind of appreciate this formulation is just like a finishing powder. What's the difference between even the other lighter ones that are referred to as finishing powders? Um, so, you know, yes, they could and should go deeper, but I think even if they went deeper, which they should, you know, how much bronzing are you gonna get just because also just the formulation, which is a beautiful formulation, is really more of a finishing powder. So also you have to realize what you're gonna get. Now, with that being said, with me hating, to be honest, like, so today, you know, because I've always used these to set my cream bronzer. Today, I, I made a mission to, I said, I was not going to use any cream bronzer, powder bronzers, any other bronzers from any other products. I was only going to use um, the Hourglass. And so I used the deepest shade that is in the snake. To be honest, though, uh, to just give it um, a fair shake, it did actually bring warmth to my skin. It as light as this look, like on my arm, this looks really light. And and I also do recognize my face is a little bit lighter than my arm. So um, like you can actually kind of see, you see how my, the inside of my arm, that's actually more of my face where um, the outer arm is dar darker. So if you transplant this, but over here, um, then you can imagine this is not as light as it looks on this um, side of my arm. So when I actually use it on my face, I will say it did bronze me a little. I want to give it a little bit of credit. I won't completely say it didn't bronze me. It actually did bring some warmth to my face. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, when we, well, at least when I use bronzer, I kind of use it like also like contour. A lot of the bronzers I like to pick, um, yeah, we'll have a little bit of warmth to it, but also we'll have some coolness to it and, and depth, of course. Um, and a lot of times tends to be more of a matte finish, um, not like these um, luminescent finishes. Um, but so when I, especially my cheekbones, when I apply them, they will have me snatch, chisel my um, cheekbones. These aren't going to chisel me, right? Like this isn't going to really chisel me and give me contour action that... You know, we always use the word bronzer, but a lot of times we use our bronzers like contours. Where a true bronzer is just bringing warmth. They're not trying to chisel you out. So if we're just talking about straight warmth, it actually did bring, it's a soft warmth. It, it, it's not super pigmented, it's not super deep. But on my skin tone, it actually did bring some warmth to my face. And so... It did bronze me a little bit. It's a stretch for my skin tone, but I can pull it off if I'm doing a very soft no makeup makeup look, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it's not gonna bronze or snatch you in the way that you think with a typical bronzer. And for two reasons. One, yes, it, you would snatch me better if you could go much deeper than this hourglass. We need deeper. But regardless, the finish I feel like anyway, the formulation is a finishing powder formulation and not a true bronzer. So I don't know, you know, for fair skinned people who use these um, and they might like it because it's, it's still at least deep enough for them and they might appreciate that formulation. So maybe they do feel like it's a satisfactory bronzer. I don't know. It's hard for me to judge it because number one, obviously it's not deep enough, but I just get the sense, even if we go deeper, which I hope they do, it would be interesting to see how it would work in terms of its snatchability when I feel like it has more of a finishing powder finish formulation. <laughs> um, but so, so it's just about expectation once you're going into this. You know, anybody going into this going, I want a bronzer. If you're my skin tone or deeper and you're like, I want this to bronze me. I want this to snatch me. You're going to be mad. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be pissed at Hourglass. I already went in going, this is a finishing powder. I did not even, I did it for y'all, but I did not go in there buying this, saying to myself, oh, 
I'm expecting this to snatch me. I went into this going, I think that'll work as a finishing powder. And it's all relative. You know, we kind of went through this. If you remember the Chanel oversized healthy growth powder, there was a big debate. Is it a bronzer? Is it a setting powder? And people still debate it to this day. Um, you know, and because guess what? All the fair skin tones are using the deep one as bronzer. And I know it works for them and it looks great for them as bronzer. On me, it's my fin it's my setting powder. It's my finishing powder, and I love it. I hit pan, um, but I know for me, it's not a bronzer, and I don't have any expectations of that. But it's about your expectation. I held off on buying it for for initially because I was like, that ain't gonna bronze me. I'm not buying that. And then once I changed my thought process and said, I'm buying it as a finishing powder. Oh my god, I love it. I love it to set my face. I love it to finish my face. So it's all about also expectations, not, but not that we can't ask Hourglass to do more because yes, Hourglass, this is not, don't tell me this is the deepest you can go to. But if you are my skin tone, um, just know you can use it as a lovely finishing powder um, that will bring some warmth, will bring a little bit of warmth, but it's not going to truly chisel um, your skin to, um, like as you think of a true bronzer. So in the end, this long-winded talk, <laughs> do I like this? I do. I do. Um, I think it's beautiful. Um, you just have to have your expectations, the right expectations. Number one, you have to understand, number one, the formulation. These all, regardless, I don't care if you notice, I don't care if it's a highlighter, if they call it a finishing powder, if they call it a bronzer, if they call it a blush, whatever they call it, the formulation for all of these are these beautiful, finely mealed, sheer blurring powder. They're blurring powder. So, so they just make your face look blurred. Like I have a light foundation on. I use the Fenty Skin Tint. So I did not, I've, I, I did a light foundation so you could still see um, my imperfections. But that's the point that I can have a look that looks like me. It's my skin, but better, but have myself looking glowing and beautiful. Um, and, but don't have expectations that you would for a powder blush, a matte powder blush or, or things like that. It's to give you a soft glow. And so if you're into this ethereal, blurring, glowing look, then that's, then this is beautiful. Um, so it's not the most pigmented blush, but I don't think it's, that's not the intention. So these are blushes that will show on us. These are highlighters that will show on us. And this powder is a great finishing powder for me, might be a bronzer to somebody else. But, you know, if you are fair skin, you know, I am, I am aware that I actually, I believe these can come off really deep um, for some people. So on me, it's looking light and beautiful. Um, obviously, if you're fair skin tone, um, this not to say that you can't use this palette, um, but you'll just have to go lighter with these blushes um, that you could probably use this truly as your bronzer. Um, this highlighter might be too much for you, might be too deep for you to use as a highlighter like I did, but might look lovely on the eyes instead. So it's all about figuring out what works best with your skin tone. Um, but if you love this finish, that's what it's all about. If you, It's about the formulation is the key. So if you love this finish that it gives to the skin, then I think it is a fantastic product. And then you just work the products how it works best with your skin tone. So that is it. I think I've talked enough. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the Hourglass Ambient um, Edit Unlocked in the Snake um, colorway. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Um, if you, uh, are not already, please also follow me on Instagram. I'm very active there. Daps underscore makeup. I'm also on TikTok as well. Um, but especially YouTube and, um, Instagram, please follow and subscribe. Um, soon I'll be giving a giveaway. If you watched my last episode, um, I'm, I'm getting things together to give a giveaway. So, um, be on the lookout one of these days. I'll be giving a good way, but please subscribe. You know, um, it would be great if I could get maybe to 250. Maybe that'd be a great way to celebrate with a giveaway. Uh, so please subscribe to my channel. 
But I will see you the next time when we talk about another luxury item, which is, and I do have something coming soon. Pat McGrath. Um, and maybe some other. Actually, I've gotten some new lippies, maybe some Hermes, Dior, and some other names. So I do have some videos lined up. I, I know my videos are far and in between because I am a working mom, but um, I do have some other um, videos um, planned soon. So I will see you the next time. Bye.